Join me inside my writing yurt. Come on. Our second question today comes all the way from India. In a comment in a recent Ask Cozy Grammar video, Sri Kushal from India asked us to explain the difference between gerunds, infinitives, and participles. So here are three ways to remember the difference between these three terms with a few extra memory tips that I don't think you'll find anywhere else. Let's jump right in. Here is the first tip. Gerunds always end in I-N-G. That's the easiest way to see clearly, oh, this could be a gerund. Does it end in an I-N-G? It may be a gerund. Now, you can remember this connection between I-N-G and gerund by remembering that of these three words, gerunds, uh, infinitives, and participles, Gerund is the only word that has both a G and then N. It starts with the letter G, and ING ends with the letter G. Gerund, ing. In fact, we could make up our own word and say what we're talking about here is gerunding. But more seriously, uh, and to be more specific, a gerund is a verb ending in ING that is used as a noun. This is a very important point. All of these things, gerunds, infinitives, and participles, are what are sometimes called verbals. They're all forms of verbs. That's something you can see in the word itself, verb, verbal. They're all forms of verbs that can be used both as a noun and as another part of speech like a, an adjective, for instance, or like a noun. Verbs, as you'll remember, are action words like run, play, or sing. And nouns are words that name people, places, or things. So if we add ing to the verb sing, for instance, we get singing. And we can use singing as a noun, as a thing, uh, the name of an activity. For example, I like singing. Here, singing is the thing, the noun, the activity of singing that I like. La. Okay, moving on, our second tip. Infinitives, on the other hand, are the form of the verb that always begin, or almost always begin, with the preposition to. For example, to run, to play, to sing. And infinitives, like gerunds, can also be used like nouns. For example, let's take a, a, an example similar to the one we just looked at. I like to sing. I like to sing. Here, to sing, again, the action of singing, is the thing, the noun, that I like. In fact, speaking of singing, there's a song that uses a lot of infinitives. It's called The Impossible Dream. It goes something like this. To dream the impossible dream, to fight the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave dare not go, to dream, to fight, to bear, to run. All of these are the infinitive form of those verbs. You can also think of infinitives as the root or a dictionary form of the verbs. Because aside from the preposition to, nothing else is added. No tense, no singular subject or plural subject, no mood, no un anything, nothing else is added. We have just the root form, the dictionary form of the verb, and the preposition to. So, 
here's a handy memory trick for remembering that infinitives are the two form of the verb. Say the word infinitive out loud. Go ahead, really say it out loud. Infinitive. And now listen. Do you hear how we naturally emphasize or accent the T sound? Infinitive. Infinitive. And now notice also that the word begins with I-N. In. Infinitives take us into the dictionary. Let me say that again. Infinitives take us into the dictionary. Infinitive to form. And now for our third tip, participles. Students sometimes find participles to be particularly intimidating. Even the word participle sounds intimidating, doesn't it? But a participle is simply a verb that can be used as a part of a verb phrase or as another part of speech besides a verb. That, in fact, is my way to remember it. Participle. Do you see how it begins with P-A-R-T? Part is simple. Participle. Part of a verb phrase or used as another part of speech. For example, here is a verb phrase. I am singing. I am singing. Here, am singing is the verb phrase with the helping or auxiliary verb am and the present participle singing. I am singing is in the present tense, so we use the present participle of the verb singing. I am singing. Now, I think I can hear what you're wondering. Since the present participle singing ends with ing, does that make it a gerund? In this case, no. When the ing form of a verb is used as part of a verb phrase, such as is singing, is running, is playing, it is merely a present participle. It's not, in that case, a gerund. However, let me tell you one last secret about gerunds. Even though a participle may not be a gerund, a gerund is always a participle. Why? Because gerunds are verbs ending in ing that are used as a different part of speech, namely as a noun. Part, participle. So remember our first example, I like singing. Here, singing is a participle because it is being used as another part of speech, as a noun. And it is also a gerund because it ends in ing. Technically, a gerund is a present participle used as a noun. Now that technical definition is the sort of thing that usually intimidates students, but I hope that with these tips and memory tricks that I've given you, that definition won't be as intimidating as it might seem at first. Remember, a gerund, present participle, that is used as a noun. Singing, however, is not an infinitive, because infinitives, remember, take us in to the dictionary. I need the word to in front of them. So I hope uh, that helps Sri Kushal to answer your question about the difference between gerunds, infinitives, and participles, these three different kinds of verbals. If you have any follow-up questions, don't hesitate to ask.